Hello, this is Patricia, the Crazy Cat Lady Crochet and Crafts channel. Thank you so much for clicking on my link and joining me in this video today. Today we're going to um, make a bath puff. This one is one that I have made and it matches the bath mitt. It's the bath mitt that I made. Let me zoom out. And so these two go together. And today we're going to make a bath puff to ma to match this bath mat. I'm all about matchy matchy. For today's project I'm going to be using a four millimeter hook. Scissors. I don't think you need a close up of that. A yarn needle. Put that over here. We don't lose it. And we're going to start off with a light mint green to do the handle and the first round. And then we're going to swap over to the darker mint green. These are both 100% cotton. They are 8-4. And they are super skinny strands. So I use the I use double strand when I'm doing stuff like this. So let me get this wound up here and out of the way. Not too far out of the way because I need it in just a little bit. You go ahead and get your yarn. Put that dark green aside. Here's the light green. the end of it. And the first thing that we want to do, of course with any crochet project, is we want to form a slip knot. My cats have been on my table and there's cat hair everywhere. So how do you form a slip knot? Just wrap your yarn around your finger. Take it off your finger and put the yarn behind the loop. And then just draw the loop through and tighten it up. Then you want to put your hook inside the loop. Hang on to the short end of the tail and pull. So first of all, we're going to make a chain of four stitches. One, two, three, four. Then we're going to crochet the last stitch to the first stitch. So it makes a ring. Just do a slip stitch. So insert your hook, draw up a loop, and then Pull that loop through the, the stitch right there. After you get that part done, so that's going to be the inside of your bath puff. And it'll make more sense here in a minute. Then we need to insert our hook into the center of the chain, just crochet one stitch there and then we're going to make the loop for the handle so we're going to crochet 40 chain stitches one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 8, whoopsie, 18, 19, 20, 21, 
have 40 chain stitches, take the last stitch, down to the first stitch, and then just do a slip stitch. Just put your hand, your hook through the loop. Draw up a loop and then just pull through the stitches. And then what we're going to do at this time is we're going to, I'm going to chain just one stitch and I'm going to, oops, cut it off right there and pull through. And that'll form a knot right there because I'm going to swap colors. So we're done. I don't have enough of that green to make a full one, but I, I like the two-tone green. And then I'm just going to put a little knot in there just to make sure it doesn't come out. gonna see that. Now I'm gonna get my darker green and I'm gonna put this light green over there. You can use all the same color. This is just my personal preference. So if you're just using all the same color just Sit tight until I get set up here and we'll get to going. Get okay, my slip stitch made. Then I'm going to slip stitch in the middle of that ring I want it to go over okay and then we're going to do 20 chain 20 chain stitches inside this circle so one Put your hook through the loop there. Two. Three. Four. going to work over those strings. Six. Insert your hook, draw up a loop, and pull it through. That's seven. Eight. 
I'm going to cut those strings off now because I think they're crocheted in enough they're not going to come out. So we're on eight and we've got twelve more to go. Nine. Eleven. Thirteen. I'm going to put some of these tighter. Just grab your thread and scoot it around that ring. Fourteen. Come over here on the other side of this loop. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen and one more makes twenty. After you get your twentieth stitch done, I'm gonna redo that last one. Looks like I lost a string there. We're going to slip stitch the last stitch to this first stitch, and I'm going to grab that little straggler right there. We're just going to slip stitch and pull that through. And then In each of the stitches, we are going to do three double crochets. So in this first one here, we need to wrap around our hook, drop a loop, pull through, through once and pull through twice. So there's one and then in that same space, that same space, do three more double crochets. So this is going to be two Something. Three. We're going to do four double crochets in each of the 20 stitches.
So that was the second stitch. Now we're on the third stitch to do tween. We're going to do four in each of the twenty stitches. Now I'm not going to make you. I'm not going to have you watch me do all of them. I'm just do a few. So all in all, in the first round, you're going to have 80, 80 stitches. After you start crocheting a little bit, you can already see that it's starting to form the wave. This wave will form all by itself. So continue crocheting four stitches in each one of these stitches around the loop and when you complete all all the stitches, all 80 stitches press play and I'll be here to let you know the, the next step to take but it's fairly simple four double crochets in each one of those stitches and I'll be back in a minute. Now that we have made our way around the first round of sti stitches, four double crochet in each of the, to the 20 stitches and you should have 80 double crochets. This thing, thing that I'm going to, going to do this is the last double crochet. And this is the first. So we're going to slit stitch. We're going to first slip stitch the last stitch to the first stitch. And then we're going to do the same thing all over again. We're going to do four double crochets in each stitch. We're going to do another round, four double crochets in each stitch. I know it sounds like a lot, but it goes so fast. You just kind of zone out, or this is the perfect project you can do while watching TV because you really don't need to pay that much attention to it. Once you get done with the next round of four double crochets in each in each stitch go ahead and press play and I'll be here to let you know what the next step is have fun here we are at the end of the second round I put a stitch marker so when I got to looking to see how much further I had to go all I had to do was look for the stitch marker so I'm going to remove it and I don't know if you notice this or not but this is a lighter green I ran out of the dark green so I added the light green to it so let's do the slip stitch of the, the last stitch into the first stitch so just Insert your hook, draw up the loop, and then pull through the loop. 
Easy peasy. Now the next thing we're going to do, this will be the last round. We're going to do a round of half double crochets. Four half double crochets in each stitch. So that was one, two, three, and four. And the tighter that you make your stitches, the tighter your bath sponge, your bath poof, the bath poof will be. If you make it loose, then it's gonna just, it's not gonna hold up underwater. Because remember, when it gets wet, it's gonna expand. So, I'm a tight crocheter by nature. I just thought I'd throw that in there. I know some people crochet, you know, we all crochet at different tensions. So that was the second grouping of four. I lost a loop there. And this third round, it's gonna, it may take you a little while, just get your good TV show on, or a good movie on, and, or call up a good friend, and just talk to them, or watch TV while you do this, and it, it'll pass real fast. And then you'll, you'll reap the rewards from it when, the next time you use it in your shower, because with my cotton yarn, it is. It's so soft, and this, this cotton yarn, it, it suds up real well. So it's, it's like a, a little bit of investment of your time into something that you're going to enjoy for a while. I know people that have had their bath poofs for, you know, you know year, two years, and, um, since these are 100% cotton, you can throw them in the wash machine. Um, I would not recommend using fabric softener because fabric softener may make it less resilient to absorbing. I just, what I do with mine is I just throw it in the wash machine and then I just hang it back up in the shower to dry. You should wash it, you know frequently to get, you know, rid of the bacteria and stuff because, you know, it's washing the bacteria and stuff off of your body, so you're going to need to put it through the wash machine. If you're using colored yarn like I am, I wouldn't recommend using bleach, but vinegar is a very good way to disinfect clothes also, just a little tip. Throw, throw that out at you there. But once you get done with this last row, slip stitch the last stitch to the first stitch, bind it off, cut your thread, and then weave in your loose ends. I will be back, but in case you decide not to come back, that's, that's what you're going to need to do to finish it off. If you're not happy with the size of your bath puff at the end of this round, just keep doing more rounds until you get the size bath puff that you're comfortable with. I have a small hand, so a, a small bath puff is going to work really well in my hand. But if you have a larger hand, you may want yours a little bit bigger. So in order to make it bigger, you would just increase your rounds. When you get done with this third round, go ahead and press play and I'll be right here and we'll finish it off together. 
Alright, here we are at the, the end of the, I think it was the third row. One, two, three, third row. There's the last stitch, and where my stitch marker is, that's that was the beginning of the row. Oops, I just pulled that stitch out. this stitch it back in here. It came out of this stitch right here. And this was a half double crochet. So now what we're going to do is we're going to slip stitch this last stitch of the last row to the first stitch of this row where my stitch marker is. So go ahead and insert your hook into that very first stitch, draw up a loop, and then pull through. And we want to cut off a long tail. Better to have it too long than not long enough. And then just pull the yarn through. I'm going to take my stitch marker out because I don't, I never needed it in the first place. I just like to see where the beginning was. Then we'll thread our yarn through our needle. Since I'm doing this with two strands of yarn, I'm just going to do each yarn separately. Oops, I almost had it. Come on now. Good gracious. My hands were shaking terribly this morning. I got it. There we go. And once your yarn is thread through your needle, just go ahead and insert it through a few stitches. I'm going to do the outside. Same time I'm doing this, make sure my bath puff stays in view. And then we'll just turn it around and do it on this side. Be careful not to poke yourself with your needle. There we go. So we've got it going through three times. It should stay put. And then since I used two strands of yarn, hopefully I won't have as much difficulty threading this strand as I did the other one. Okay. much easier. Then I'm going to go, I'm going to 
take this strand of yarn and go the other way. So I'm going to put it through this side. Pretty good distance in. And I think I'm going to go down. Just, now don't go all the way through the loops, just kind of in the center of them. Because you're trying to hide the tail. Just bury it down in there. There we go. See, it didn't does it come through on this side. And then we'll move it down to this row here. And just like the last time, don't go don't go through to the other side. Just try to get it where it's in the middle. Sometimes you just have to play with it. And then pull it tight. And snip it off. There we go. Let me grab the handle here. And here we have our bath poof. It's a pretty good size. I would say it's about the size of a, a small softball. This one's about the size of a baseball, and I'd say this one's about the size of a softball. With this one, the reason it's so much smaller is I did every row in the half double crochet. And with this one, we did the first two rows in double crochet and then the last row in the half double crochet. So to recap, we did four single crochets. We took the last stitch of that chain and slip stitched it to the first stitch. From that point, we crocheted up 40 stitches. We slip stitch the 40th chain stitch to the first chain stitch. And then at that time, because I used two different colors, I snipped off the light green, added the darker green to it, and in the center, we did 20 single crochets in their ring. Once we completed the 20 single rings, in each of those 20 stitches, we did four single crochets, double crochets. Once we did those, 80 stitches. Then we double crocheted in those 80 stitches four times each stitch. So that came up with 320 stitches. And after the 320 stitches were done, we did four half double crochets in each one of those 320 stitches. And if I do my math correctly, that would be 1,280 stitches half double crochet. It's, mine is very soft. I'm, I'm going to enjoy this, or I'm going to give it to... A family member or friend as a gift. Thank you so much for joining me in creating this bath puff. I hope you have a great day. Remember to give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Subscribe if you'd like to continuously receive videos from me and click on the notification bell to be reminded or notified when I am uploading a new video. Also, my next video will be on creating some kitchen dishcloths. And they're not your typical dishcloths like you're thinking with cotton. I have a, I call this the heavy duty 
dishcloth. It's it's made out of ribbon, and I'm currently using a, a different one that I made, and I I really like it. So the next videos are going to be this dishcloth made out of ribbon, and then I have my super scrubber with the nubbies. This is also made out of ribbon, and then. We're going to do a round pot scrubber, and there's the front, <laughs> sorry about that. And this is made out of ribbon also, and it has nubbies. So the next video is going to be with all three of these products, or these items, but it's going to be broke down into like different chapters. It's not going to be all one video. But it's it's all gonna be the same thing if that if that makes any sense. And I'm gonna do them just simultaneously, one right after another. So I hope you have a good rest of the day and thank you so much for joining me in this video. Take care now.